Hi, I'm Donna Riley, and I'm here to talk to you today about integrating ethics into core engineering courses. The first question that you might have is, can I really do this? And I'm here to say emphatically, yes. Yes, you can do this. The key thing is to start small. Do one thing and see how that goes, and you can learn as you go. It's okay not to be an expert, and it's especially important to own that and to be humble about it and to be willing to learn from your colleagues, both in engineering and in philosophy, that know a great deal about ethics and about engineering ethics. And I'm here to tell you that if I can do it, you can do it too. Like many of you, I was educated in a very traditional engineering program. I learned nothing about ethics in my undergraduate years. And over time, I just became curious about engineering ethics. And that curiosity was cultivated by numerous mentors. And eventually, I became a founding faculty member as part of a new engineering program. And we all looked at each other and we said, Who, who's going to teach engineering ethics? And we kind of agreed to do it collaboratively. But I began to take very seriously my commitment as an engineer to model professional responsibility for engineering students. And I think that's a really important thing that engineering faculty can do. So I want you to take a minute and just think and reflect about how you came to feel that ethics is important in engineering education. And then to also think about what strengths you bring to an engineering ethics education project in a core engineering course. And you can just press pause on this video while you think about it for a minute. And when you're ready, you can press play again. So when you sit down and you say, I want to integrate ethics into my core engineering course, the first thing you really want to do is assess your context. Ask yourself, what is the shape of the ethics curriculum at my institution? What are the learning outcomes for the overall ethics curriculum? What do we want students to be able to do after four years? And where is it that students are currently learning ethics in the curriculum? Are they learning it in first year? Are they learning it in capstone design? Are they learning it elsewhere, somewhere in the middle years? Are they taking ethics as part of their general education requirements? And then you also want to ask, what specifically is it that students are learning about ethics? Are they learning some foundational ideas of ethics frameworks and how to think about ethics? Are they learning how to analyze case studies in engineering ethics? Are they learning about professional society codes of engineering ethics? Once you know those things, you can think about what it is that you want to teach in your core engineering course. The second thing you really need to know is what is it that students know at the point that they are entering your class specifically? You might wonder about how or whether they value engineering ethics and engineering ethics instruction. You might ask what skills they bring. Do they know how to reflect deeply? Can they think critically? Do they know how to participate in discussion at a high level? Can they engage in societal analysis of engineering problems? Do they know how to do ethics analysis? Have they been taught ethics specific content? And so at this point, you might be panicking. If your curriculum doesn't have a lot of ethics in it, you might be saying, gosh, my students don't have any exposure to engineering ethics. What if this is all they get, this one thing that I'm doing? Well, you might feel a lot of pressure, uh, but just please know that we are here to support you and you will decide what is most important and teach those things to your students. So one of the things that you definitely want to do when you're incorporating ethics into a core engineering course is to make sure that you're making things relevant. First of all, the ethics has to be relevant to the course topic. And there's lots of different core courses and lots of different examples of how you might make ethics relevant to that core topic. There's lots of great resources out there. The National Academies has a resource called the Online Ethics Center at onlineethics.org. And there you'll find a whole bunch of great case studies for incorporation of ethics into core courses. They also have a great document infusing ethics into the development of engineers that provides some great examples. And finally, I've written a textbook companion about thermodynamics that incorporates ethics as well as other kinds of liberal arts education into a thermodynamics course. 
So depending on the course, you're going to select cases. Um, I've provided here on the slide some examples for a status course. For example, you might look at the City Corp Tower uh, design problems. You might look at the Hyatt Regency collapse case. You might look at earthquake damage from various earthquakes, both recently and in the more distant past. For fluids, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse is a really interesting fluid study with it. Hurricane Katrina might be interesting. For circuits, there's a classic case study from the 90s about a flaw in the Pentium chip, and another classic case about the uh, BART uh, transit controls. Um, you might, for thermodynamics, think about climate change, and there's lots of cases, uh, both historical and present, about uh, energy policy and climate. You might think more specifically about specific inventions like Dean Kamen's water purifier and generator com uh, combination design. Um, that has uh, applications in developing countries. And you also want to make things relevant to student lives. So you might draw on current events like the VW diesel cheat or the FIU bridge collapse. You might go to your alumni and think about uh, what they might be able to provide in terms of life experience and, and uh, cases from industry or your own uh, work experience. You might look to local cases or campus cases um, I once taught about a co-generation um, project that was being contemplated on my campus, but ultimately asking students what's relevant to them is the best way to find out what's relevant to them. And you might also think about uh, combining cases that are both on a micro scale, that is things that are really individual decisions about, say, whether or not to blow the whistle in a given situation, versus macro scale problems that might be more about decisions made at the level of an industry or a professional society or a legislature or a society as a whole. You want to also select effective learning strategies. So uh, you're definitely going to want to be interactive as you would with teaching problem solving. You might want to incorporate more discussion and reflection than you might be used to incorporating in your classes. And I can recommend some resources there. The uh, Canadian government produces a green guide uh, for teaching and learning. There's a whole series. And uh, one of the items in that series is on leading effective discussions. I found it very helpful um, in sort of a primer on how to lead good discussions. Um, you definitely want to make connections between ethics and the course. You want to integrate ethics with whatever assignments you have that uh, students are definitely going to be valuing. And if you teach cases, make sure that you make students the center of the case. They are the decision maker. They need to see themselves as the professional acting rather than the judge over what other people are doing. And again, the more that you can bring in your alumni or your industrial advisory committee or your own experience to make things uh, very engaging, I think the better off you are. You want to be creative and really use what you can from design to help students design and redesign ethics solutions. Have them be generative and brainstorm lots of different ways you could go in a given situation. And have them think preventively. If you were going to uh, create a situation where that ethics problem were never to have occurred in the first place, what would you need to do? You want to be explicit with expectations and assessment. A lot of students will be uneasy because you're asking them to do things that they haven't done much before. So you want to very clearly share learning objectives so they understand what it is you're trying to have them be able to do at the end of the course. You want to motivate the teaching of ethics and why it is important to engineering and relevant to your course. You want to explain the learning strategies you're using. Why is discussion or reflection important? You want to use rubrics that value the things that you care about. For example, if you want students to take multiple perspectives and be able to see multiple points of view about an ethics problem, you should grade for that. If you want them to think critically or think reflectively or think preventively, you should grade for those things. You want to ultimately provide the scaffolding to students as they learn. That means acknowledging discomfort with new things as they learn those new things. You want to give copious formative feedback in a low stakes way, for example, giving opportunities for iteration so that they can really be experimental and try and understand that they are there to learn. And finally, I just want to encourage you to stay on track as you explore incorporating engineering ethics into a core engineering course. 
Focus on learning objectives and on building student capacities. And don't be intimidated when people ask you about coverage of engineering content. We are free now to focus on what our students are able to do. It's not necessarily about their knowing the last esoteric piece of knowledge in the subject area. And don't worry for now about questions that engineering ethics educators like to ask each other, like are students better off in a standalone course or in smaller assignments that are embedded across the curriculum? The answer is both. Is it better to have a philosopher or an engineer educating students? Yes, you want both. Is it the goal for students to have more knowledge of ethics or better reasoning or decision-making skills or to take better ethical action? Yes, we want all of those things ultimately. So don't worry too much about the either or there. And finally, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's a growing community of ethics educators out here and we are more than eager and willing to help you out. So with that, good luck.